Welcome back again. This video will talk about something called ions. In the previous video, we talked about isotopes and how with isotopes, we have different numbers of neutrons. Well, now we are going to focus primarily on the fact that with ions, our numbers of electrons can change. But remember, the same thing holds true. Protons never change. After the end of this video, you should be able to describe how cations are made, describe how anions are made, show appropriate abbreviations for ions with mass, atomic numbers, and charge. First, what's an ion? Well, an ion is an atom or group of atoms that has a positive or negative charge. Ions form when an atom gains or loses electrons. You can write ions by quite simply adding a positive or negative charge followed by a number. It's typically written in the upper right hand corner, which you'll see. This number represents the amount of electrons gained or lost by that particular atom. Cations is an atom or group of atoms with a positive charge. Metals on the left hand side of the staircase of the periodic table tend to lose electrons in order to become cations. Cations have the same name as the element that forms them, but it does have different chemical properties. For example, sodium and calcium. Sodium has a one plus charge, and so it's called the sodium cation. Calcium is two plus, and so it's called the calcium cation. Anions, on the other hand, is an atom or groups of atoms with a negative charge. Nonmetals tend to form ions by gaining electrons. The name of the anion is the element name with IDE on the end. So for example, oxygen and chlorine. Oxygen with a minus two charge is called the oxide anion. And chlorine with a one minus charge is called the chloride anion. Notice the IDE ending on the, each of those words. There's a really easy way to remember the difference between cations and anions. Ion formation is very similar to dieting. For example, losing electrons is positive, right? That's your cation being formed, just like losing weight is a good thing, right? Conversely, gaining electrons or gaining weight is negative. That's a bad thing. So we say gaining electrons are negative. Anions are formed. Here's a little bit about abbreviations. Typically, whenever you write an abbreviation, in the upper left-hand corner, you are going to have the mass number. In the lower left-hand corner, you will have the atomic number. And in the upper right-hand corner, you will have the charge. Same thing with lithium. So it'll be mass number, atomic number, and charge. For example, practice is really what makes perfect here. So if you wanna pause the video and try these on your own, I really encourage you to do that because this table looks very similar to what you've seen. The only extra change here is that we now have ions involved. Okay, hopefully you tried that. So in the first example, we have sulfur, okay? But actually it's called the sulfide anion because it has a minus two charge. So when we do this, the atomic number is 16 because it's in the lower left-hand corner. The mass number, again, is going to be the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. In this case, we know that the atomic number is 16, so we know that that's really the number of protons. So that'll be 32 and 16. And then if you go on to now the number of electrons, you may say, well, if this is now longer neutral, you have to think about what would give a minus two charge on that sulfide ion. Well, because we said that positive things have to equal negative things when it's neutral, if it has two extra negative things, that must mean that the number of electrons is 18, because if it were neutral, the number of electrons would have to be 16. But because we have that extra minus two charge up here, that tells us there are two 
extra negative things put onto that ion. And so that's why it would be 18. And then for the symbol in the upper left-hand corner, you do wanna make sure to write that 32 because that is the mass number. Next up, this is nitrogen. And we know that because of the atomic number. The mass number is 14. The number of protons is seven. The number of neutrons is seven. And then for my symbol, be really careful here. So the math number is 14, the atomic number seven, but then here's the new part. What number goes in the upper right-hand corner? Well, if you guessed minus three, you would be right. Let's talk about why. Well, we see that the number of protons is seven and the number of electrons is 10. So we have seven positive things, right? That's the protons. And we have 10 negative things. That's the electrons. So minus seven plus 10 would give you a net charge of minus three. Let's take a look at this one. We've got chlorine. The number of protons would be 17. The number of neutrons would be 18. Now comes the symbol for our abbreviation. So 35 is gonna go in the upper left-hand corner. 17 is going to go in the lower left in the lower left. And then the question becomes, well, what charge am I going to have? So if you notice, we've got 17 protons and 18 electrons. So this is plus 17. This is minus 18. So guess what? We have a net charge of minus one. And then finally for calcium, number of protons will be 20. Neutrons will be 20. And electrons, be careful here. Notice the charge is plus two. So if the charge is plus two, that means that you must have two less negative things, right? Because again, we can't change those protons. So you must have two less negative things in this atom. And so that's why the number of electrons would be 18. And then you do have to fill in that lower left-hand corner, and that would be 20. Hopefully this helped you to make a little bit more sense of the difference between now ions and isotopes. Remember isotopes, we were talking about the number of neutrons changing, but now with ions, we're focusing on the number of electrons changing. As always, you will need extra practice with this, so make sure that you did Worksheet 3. Thank you so much for watching.